All right, welcome back. Uh, is this the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa? We are looking at health issues. Uh, specifically, yesterday was uh, the World Hypertension Day. We'll be looking at um, all of that this morning. Now, in the wake of VTOL, uh, the Hypertension Day that is, which has as a theme, uh, measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. Uh, medical experts, including the World Health Organization, Nigeria Medical Association, NMA, and the Nigerian Heart Foundation, NHF, have warned that the prevalence of hypertension in the country is on the rise. Now, this, they said, is due to prevailing insecurity and poor socioeconomic condition. Specifically, Executive Director of the NHF, Dr. Kingsley Akinwe, said the prevalence of hypertension is estimated to be between 30 and 40 percent of Nigeria's over 200 million population, which is in the range of 60 to 80 million Nigerians. Uh, we're looking at um, uh, the impact of all of this. We have um, a public health practitioner, founder, market doctor, Dr. Yetunde Ayo Oyalo. Thanks, Oyalo. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, Thank good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it is indeed a pleasure. Uh, uh, striking number statistics there, about 60 to 80 million Nigerians uh, have in hypertension. It is also alarming that most of them are not actually seeking treatment because they're not even aware that they have um, hypertension. Tell us what the incidence is like in the country. Okay, um, so good morning everybody again. So we already have the incidence. I mean, Dr. Kiroi has said between 30 to 40 percent of the population, and that's the data we have. But we know that um, most of the time, our data in Nigeria isn't very accurate because the data you have is from probably from people uh, coming into the hospitals, not even from screening exercises uh, going on across the country. Um, so because hypertension is a silent killer, most people is referred to as a silent killer because you're not likely to have any symptom, you're not likely to feel anything, you know, or by the time people start to feel symptoms, then it means that there is already an advancement of the condition. So, I mean, uh, it's difficult to say this is the exact number, but we know that um, because of the factors that are skewed towards us, being that we are black, when you're black, um, the incidence is higher. Of course, it's also higher in men. You know, so because we have all of that, we know that um, there will be a lot of people that are hypertensive. Whether they now know they are hypertensive or not is another um, kettle of fish. So that's what I have to say. So but let's get to, um, because at this point in time, we have to find out, you know, the causes and how we can prevent or manage the situation. So um, what are the likely causes of this? A lot of people will think that, I mean, if you're into a lot of thinking, and all of that, you probably might just have a tendency of becoming hypertensive. But you're a practitioner. Can you kindly take us through what would be the likely causes of being hypertensive? So um, the causes of hypertension are varied, you know, um, and um, there, there, there's some causes, that, there's some things we call the risk factors, you know, because you cannot, for, for some people, it's inherited, it's hereditary. You know, it's just in the it's it's just part of their genetic makeup. So they're going to be hypertensive, probably because someone in their family, other people in their family, have been hypertensive. But even in these cases, for those that is genetic, um, there are ways that they can prevent, you know, being hypertensive or let me say manage. You understand, getting um, getting to the extremes of being hypertensive, manage the symptoms and the signs and the, um, and the um, what do I call it, the complications that may arise. However, generally speaking, we have things like um, being overweight, you know, as a cause of hypertension, being obese. We have lack of physical activity. I mean, when I mean physical activity, we know that a lot of people now go out walking, jogging and all of that. But I, I must say that, um, each person needs to have a, a, a definite um, 
way of exercising. It's not one cat fits all. So the fact that someone walks for one hour doesn't mean that the other person too can walk for one hour and it be sufficient for the person. So we really need to um, be specific in the kind of exercises, kind of physical activity we're doing. The other thing that I will say is too much salt in the diet. And we know in this part of the world in Nigeria, we take a lot of salt. And we're saying that... Um, we should um, not add salt to food once it's on the table because a lot of times, you know, even though we've, have, we've put salt in food, then we add it to, to the table. Too much alcohol is also one of the causes of hypertension and it will aggravate it in someone who already has um, hypertension. So we're advocating, because I know this will be a sore point for a lot of people, we're advocating that we should not have more than one to two drinks um, per day. Then stress. Um, stress is also a cause of hypertension and um, in the country we're in, we know that stress, um, virtually everybody is stressed for one reason or the other, whether the reason or the other even co concerns you. But when you look at the economy, you look at the diesel issue, petrol, traffic, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stress factors, um, ASO strike and all of that. And that is to say that before, hypertension used to be seen in um, people who are older than 40, but this has reduced now. We're having people in their 30s being diagnosed as hypertensive. Then, of course, the older the age, the tendency that someone will also be um, hypertensive. Then there are other diseases like kidney diseases, adrenal diseases that could cause hypertension, but I think generally have glossed through um, the causes of hypertension. All right, Dr. Ayo or your lawyer, let's um, talk more about um, this hypertension. Maybe to get better clarity, hypertension, high blood pressure, does it inevitably mean that uh, if you have high blood pressure, automatically you are hypertensive? So, um, high blood pressure is somewhat classified. You know, it's somewhat classified. And I don't, uh, if I go in for the, for the sake of those who are listening, I don't think the classification is important for them. I think it's the number that is important for them. And we normally say in the medical climb that people should know their number. People should know their number. And um, we are saying that in 2022, your normal blood pressure should be, we, we measure it saying a number over another number. They're saying high blood pressure should be, should your blood pressure measurement should be about 120 over 80. 120 being the higher measurement, that's a systole, we call it a systole, but that's not, the name is not important now. That's the upper number, should be one, 120 or lower, and the lower number should be 80 or lower. So 120 over 80 should be the end. If you fall above well, 120, maybe you are still over 130 over 80 over 85, then you are having an elevated, it's not yet hypertension, but you are having an elevated blood pressure. And in this situation, there are still things you can do that can bring the blood pressure down to normal. Things like exercising, adjusting your lifestyle, adjusting your diet, all of those things can be done to bring the blood pressure down to 120, 80. But when we have blood pressure above 130, 90, 130 to 139, 130 to 140 over 90, then we can definitively say that the person is hypertensive and the person needs care. And when I mean care, the person needs adjustment of lifestyle and medications as well to, to be able to control the blood pressure. So maybe we need to get to the fundamental. I mean, what exactly is hypertension? So simply... Putting it simply is just to say increase in the pressure of the blood, increase in blood pressure. And um, I will just say, use the example of a, a water pipe. You know, if you're using a water pipe and it's it's the, 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 the when I let me say diameter is is wide, or if the if the if the water pipe is uh, um, is is big. If the pipe is big, then when you pump in water, the pressure will be low because, I mean, there's a lot of space for it to pass through. But in hypertension, it means that when you put in water into that pipe, the, 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 the ball may, be, may have become thinner. 
and it takes a lot of pressure for the water to come out. So it's actually gushing. You know the way water comes out when you put up like put up like a pressure pump. It's gushing. That is when we call what what we call hypertension. That when that happens in the blood system, that is hypertension. Ordinarily, the blood should move around the body without any pressure. You understand? But all within, let me say, all within a particular um, pressure range, we should be lower than 120, 80, we should be around that. But whenever there is an increase in this pressure, then that is when we can say the, 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 there's a condition called hypertension in the person. So you talked about uh, lifestyle adjustment and uh, you know living better uh, lives as it were. But specifically now, you also talked about uh, medication. Is it something that you have to be placed on for the rest of your life or it's something that goes away after a particular time? Okay, so I'll, 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 I'm really happy to talk about this because um, a trend that we normally see in Nigeria is that people share medications for hypertension. You know, um, a brother, a, a sister comes to visit a brother and says, oh, I've been told I have high blood pressure or in the normal parlance, they said I have BP, you know, and the brother brings out a pack of drugs and says, this is what I'm using. You to go and get it, you know, and start using it. So we have people just prescribing to each other, you know, by using the packets of medications and, you know, just getting to the pharmacy and taking taking those medications. I would want to say that um, that is not how to treat high blood pressure. I think the first thing is that it must be diagnosed by a medical practitioner. And there are lots of... Um, primary health care centers, private hospitals available where you can actually see a doctor and get a proper measurement and assessment. Because apart from the measurement, the doctor will also want to know what the cost is. Sometimes the, the, when the cost of the high blood pressure can be treated. So sometimes it's not just about taking the blood pressure um, drugs that maybe someone close to you, a friend or a relative is using. Sometimes they may need to actually treat what is causing it. And once that is treated, your blood pressure will return to normal. The other thing to note is that blood pressure cannot be treated at once. It's not an infectious disease like malaria or chest infection, that once you've been given the dose and you take it, that's the end. No. Blood pressure has to be it's a medication you are placed on and that you will probably take throughout your life. But in the, 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 the medications will not be taken the same way. And that is why it's important that if you have been diagnosed as a blood uh, as being hypertensive, you need to visit your medical practitioner regularly, at least once in a month. Because uh, as the monitor your blood pressure, if it's decreasing, if you're doing well with the medication, they may adjust the medications and reduce it. And who knows, if they're able to treat the cause now, after some time, you may be able to manage it with lifestyle adjustment. So for some people, if you are regular with your medical practitioner and you are able to monitor it and treat it, you may be able to revert back to manage it with lifestyle adjustment. But if that is not the case, the medications you are being used, that you are, you are using needs to be monitored. And sometimes if we find that um, the blood pressure is not being um, treated properly, we may decide to increase the medication. Sometimes we may decide to change the medication altogether. Sometimes we may also need to monitor the side effects of the medication. If you're having side effects with the medication, we may need to um, monitor it or counsel you on how to use the medication. But doctor, so let me button you. Yeah. Let me the button. You talked about... Um, practitioner. Okay, you talked about side effect. That's one of the reasons um, some people you know, may not want to take the drugs uh, religiously as it is. Uh, they feel that uh, it um, hampers some sort of their lifestyle as it is. Uh, you know, I've heard of people talked about uh, libido issues and some people have talked about uh, how it makes them sweat more, how it makes them pee more. So what are these side effects of using um, hypertensive drugs? So, oh, um, well, the side effects are different, and it, um, it re it's different from one drug to the other, and besides, it's also different um, ranging from one person to another. 
you know so two people can take exactly the same drugs and they will not know then they won't have the same side effects but i would like to say that uh, the side effects that these drugs cause that is the reason why you need to visit your medical practitioner at regular intervals so that you can review the side effects and um, sometimes change or adjust the dosage so for a side effect like some people who will say oh i normally um, i urinate more when i take the medication so we advise instead of taking the medication at night then take it in the morning you know some will say oh, when i take the medications i feel dizzy so we we'll say okay instead of taking it in the morning then take it at night you know and those some people who have maybe libido problems um, you can uh, you can change sometimes you may need to change the medication altogether because um, we're also looking at the quality of life of people whilst they have um, hypertension but the bottom line is besides um, irrespective of the side effect your heart has to be beaten first for you to be alive to be able to even feel a side effect so we look at this and we weigh the, um, the options before taking a decision um, can we, um, okay, uh, can you buttress the point of who is at risk of, um, you know, having all of this? You had talked about the risk factor. So can you elaborate on those who are at risk of becoming hypertensive or having a high blood pressure or whichever? Okay, so I'd said that, I'd said that, um, most of those who are who are hypertensive that being a black person in the first instance is um, is a risk factor so it's so it's hypertension racist now yeah so hypertension is more common in blacks than in whites oh, wow. yeah so hypertension is more common in blacks than in whites any That's reason great. for that so it's genetic and it's quite complex but it's just genetic, just like when you say cancer is more common in whites than in blacks. You know, you can you can ask, you can you can ask, put it to a lot of things. Even in blacks, you can make, probably look at our diet that has high salt, you know, intake. We can look at obesity, um, saying that you know most of the time we like our uh, women rounded, the kind of foods we eat. You know, we can look at all of those factors. But basically, underneath it is. Um, Genetics. All right. Talking about lifestyle uh, adjustment, you talked about, uh, I actually took um, some jottings. You talked about um, uh, too much um, um, alcohol intake. You talked about uh, poor dieting and high cholesterol. Let's talk about this um, cholesterol part. Uh, most people t tend to <coughs> not understand it, and they say they try to burn cholesterol or calories. At the end of the day, they, they mix um, both of them up. Elaborate, please. Okay, so um, for cholesterol, I mean, for some people, before you know that you have high cholesterol, you have to be tested. And that's why um, we always say, see your um, physician, you know, see your physician. Because those are not things you can just look at someone and say, oh, you have high cholesterol. You know, generally, people like to say, oh, this person is fat. Or this person is overweight, or this person is this is this person would have high cholesterol. No, it doesn't show on the face. There are slim people who have high cholesterol, and cholesterol, uh, in because I know it's a, it's a it's a topic that a lot of people talk about. How be it? They are not able to really explain um, the um, the reasons behind it. So two who are familial high who have familial high cholesterolemia. That means. They have a lot of cholesterol in their blood, and that is how it is in their family. Even when they don't take anything fatty, they don't take anything. Um, they don't take anything that should um, predispose them to have high cholesterol. It runs in their family, and they always have that. So it's when um, when they monitor the report results of their tests with their doctors that is when the doctor will be able to say okay this is actually familial this is genetic so we are not bothered about it as it were for for the other group of people um what high cholesterol does like i told you it's just like looking at the blood vessel like a pipe 
you know, like a pipe that water is flowing through it. You will find out that after some time, there will be a lot of settlement on the pipe. You know, a lot of them dirt, dust, and all of that along the pipe. And it can eventually block the pipe. So that is what happens with cholesterol. There are deposits of plaques, you know, on the walls of the vo blood vessels. And these are fat deposits. And they now clog the blood vessel and does not allow blood to flow very well. And for this reason, they get um, the people become they become hypertensive because the pressure in the blood vessels increase. So for people who have cholesterol, um, who have high cholesterol, there are medications available to be for them to use to be able to reduce. Um, the level of cholesterol they have in their system, but more um, better is use of um, lifestyle adjustments, like adjustments of diet, you know, um, physical engaging in physical activity, you know, minding our weight, you know, all of those things are very critical and important, you know, when, uh, when we talk about cholesterol. And to add, when you want to, you know, there are a lot of fatty foods and this and that. But any fatty food that you enjoy, that is sweet, you know, that is so, that you just love it, things like shrimp, you know, things like roundabouts, you know, things they call orishirishi. You know, some people, when they go and eat, they have to eat all the parts of the cow. You know, they have to ask for this. They'll point at this, oh, pick that one. No, not that one, the other one. All of those things can uh, um, have cholesterol in them, you know, so that's, that's just a simple way to know that, you know, things um, that are fatty and they are really sweet and nice, very tasty, you know, a lot of them contain cholesterol. No, so it, it, it's probably sounding that we should be tilting towards things that are not sweet and nice and probably bitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they should be taken in moderation. Oh, okay. you know, it's, they should be taken in moderation, yes. All right, so um, just before Justin uh, jumps in right here, how can one actually tell that they're, I mean, how do you now tell that you're probably hypertensive? What are, are the signs and symptoms? Of course, you know that with malaria, COVID, and what have you, you can actually say, okay, okay, so I have malaria, I, am, uh, I have COVID or something, because you can see the signs and symptoms. For hypertension, you know, we normally refer to it as a silent killer. So most of the time, um, there may be nothing. You may not feel anything. But we recommend that as people get to the age of 30, you know, they should begin to check their blood pressure at least once a month at minimum. And if you see the theme for this year, it says measure your blood pressure accurately. The word accurately is very important. That means the world is also moving into the era of self-care. So it's important. The device for measuring your blood pressure is a device that anybody can use, especially, I mean, if you're educated at least up to primary six level, you should be able to use it. So, I mean, an automated um, blood pressure meter can be used to measure the blood pressure. But there are a lot of things to be done to be sure that you measure, the, measure your blood pressure accurately. And when you find it elevated, when it's above 120, 80, it's time to go to the hospital and get to see a doctor and discuss about it. That way, you can prevent the... Um, the complications, because most of the people get to know they're hypertensive when they have the complications. And the commonest complication we see around here is stroke. You know, so most people get to know when they have a stroke, you know. So um, I think it's important we measure accurately. That is the first step to right, take. Doctor. Okay, all right, Doctor. Um, oh yeah, Lowell, let's talk more about, uh, you talked about complications and all of that. Uh, let's try and correlate it to, um, uh, blood sugar and all of that, uh, what do we need to know? So if you want to, um, generally we say people should know their numbers. So one, you need to know your weight. It's important that everybody knows their weight. It's important to know your height. So when you know your weight and height, there, uh, there is a way we can get uh, a, an index called the BMI. BMI basal metabolic index, which can be done for you by any health worker. Besides that, they will begin to measure um, 
our blood pressure. So that means the, a medical a device is used to measure the blood pressure. Um, but I mean, as we advance in age also, we need to know our blood sugar level, you know, which is measured by another device, a glucometer. That can be done at most pharmacies now. It can be done at most pharmacies now, and it can also be done in the healthcare centers. And for those who are educated, like I said, it can be done right at home. So it's something that can be learned, the device can be bought, and it can be done at home. So those are the things that we need to know. And using all of that, those, seeing our doctors with um, all of those numbers, they'll be able to advise better what to do. All right, you talked about uh, not really uh, showing visible symptoms, uh, but there have been talks about uh, uh, headaches, uh, nausea, uh, vomiting, and dizziness, and maybe blurred vision. Yes. Okay, so people talk about nausea, headache, blurred vision, and all of that. Those are also, they, they are unconstitutional symptoms. Yes, they could be for hypertension, but those are symptoms you could also have if you have a high fever. Those are symptoms you could also have if you have malaria. Those are symptoms you could have if you have any other disease. And that's why we say blood pressure is a silent killer. You may not have any of those symptoms and um, be hypertensive. And that's why some people just come down with a stroke without all of those symptoms. So we don't like to tell people that, oh, it's when you have a headache, then you have blood pressure. It could even be a, a problem of your eyesight that is causing the headache. So the the, 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 the the nugget is that people should check their blood pressure even when they don't feel any sign or symptom. All right, just before we let you go, the final question would be, uh, at what point in time do you uh, seek um, a second line treatment? So I've said that the aim is to have 12080. 12080. Anything above that, please see your doctor. All right, thank you so much. We have been speaking with Dr. Yetunde Ayo Oyalowa. She is the founder of Market Doctor. She is a public health practitioner. Thank you so much for the thoughts that you have shared this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, it is still the breakfast away from hypertension. Uh, we'll uh, take a break, we'll come back, we'll give you an update on what happened in Kano State. And of course, uh, uh, the train resumption, the Kaduna Abuja bound. Uh, we have a guest too, who will tell us more about preparations and, of course, measures uh, being put in place. In a moment, do join us again.